Spacey's Arcade. Today I am on the way to work. <laughs> why am I uh, why am I filming on the way to work? Well today guys is another pickup and yes I know what you're thinking you guys that have followed the channel for a while now. You know I was in trouble with the last couple of pickups and I really seriously did resign myself to the fact that I wouldn't be picking up anything else other than a vector game if a vector game came up and it's not a vector game. Um, so what's the backstory? Let me give you the backstory first. <laughs> and boy am I in a lot of trouble today. Oh my god. So anyway, um, and then I'll talk and then I'll tell you why I'm actually driving to work and doing this video. So in the last episode we went and did the Perth pinball competition and boy that was a lot of fun. That, that competition just made me realise the real difference between real pinball and virtual pinball and it's not like I haven't been playing other real tables. Um, so it's you know I, I, I've obviously been playing real pinball but there was something about that competition format um, and the fact that it was again quite nerve-wracking to stand up, you know to get up to the machine and play in front of an audience which was quite bizarre under sort of competition um, rules and arrangements and not that I want to like there's no way I want to sort of like compete in pinball like seriously because I just think it's a lot of fun it's really nice to do that um, and, and have some fun um, but I love pinball and you know anything that helps my game and and helps me play a little longer is a cool thing so I came away from that uh, that competition guys really thinking you know what it, it, it would be nice if I had just one real pinball machine um, and Jeez, if I could have a Tales of the Arabian Nights, that would be, that would be my absolute dream. And of course, that's not going to happen. They're way over ten, ten thousand dollars and upwards. There was one advertised on eBay for seventeen thousand Australian, but that's ridiculous, guys. That's more than a brand new Stern, you know, Ghostbusters or something, which goes around around ten k or nine or ten thousand. But anyway, those um, those you know mainstream top end um, DMD games I, I, this, I just can't um, part with the amount of coin to do that guys um, remember I do do this arcade pretty pretty much on the cheap and I, and I, and I, and I just have to do that um, otherwise it does start getting expensive really quickly I've got a household with four kids <laughs> so I'd have a, a lot of uh, disposable income but um, so for me, uh, as you know, I'm always out looking for a deal. If I can get a good deal, then you know clearly it, it makes a lot of sense. So clearly, you probably see where this video is going. So I um, I did start looking at some pinball machines just to see the current prices, and again, they're all way up there. And even the older style pinball machines, they're still you know they're still two to three k sort of thing. Um, and I just can't justify doing that, especially the upheaval to actually get the machine in the arcade and all the other stuff that goes with it. It just, no. Nah. So I don't know guys, I was sort of looking, I don't know what I was looking really, why I was looking, because it's just not going to really get a pinball machine um, for a really good deal. And Sunday came along and I was 
flicked. It was, it was one of these ones again, a little bit like that um, one way back when I got the red Tato cab. And that one happened like at a really strange hour on a Sunday night, I think it was. It was just some strange hour. It was like really, really late. This wasn't really, really late. It was like in the evening, but um, I just had, I was doing something, I can't remember what I was doing. I, flicked, I just flicked on Gumtree and just had another quick look and I searched for pinball. And up came this advert, guys. It had been up only for an hour. And it was for a Williams Sorcerer. Um, and it was really cheap. Like, really cheap. And it's not working, of course. And I knew it wouldn't be working for the price that they're putting it there. But it was really cheap. I thought, this is this is bang. Gonna go. It's probably already gone. That's, <laughs> it's a waste of way, right? I always look at these things. I think it's probably already gone. It's an hour, hour in. Anyway, I, I really, I still had to stop and think, guys. Um, I looked at it. It looks actually fairly reasonable. It looks sort of complete. Um, but it does seem like it's going to be a big project and a lot of work. And, and you know, pinballs, it's a bit of a false economy buying it cheap because you know you're actually going to probably have to tip a lot of money into it, especially when you start looking at the, um, the, the board set and everything. If they need to be replaced, it can start adding up pretty quick. However, if you're starting from a low base um, amount and if you are adding over time, then it's achievable, you know. And it means that you've, you know, you've gone through and you've fixed everything and got a machine that's then sort of, you know, not totally refurbished unless you're really good at that sort of stuff, and I'm not. <laughs> um, but you've at least got a working machine for, for reasonable money. And of course it's, you know, I, I, I even though, <laughs> but even though I sort of, I like the challenge of the projects. I still get frustrated with them. That's for sure. It's a real, it's really bizarre. It's like I really want the project, and then when I get the project, it's like I don't want this project. Uh, I want it done. But no, I think it'll be fun, guys. Um, I think it's going to be a good learning experience. I haven't done a pinball machine before. I'd really like to get this machine up and going, guys, because William Saucer is is a um, is an awesome machine. I, you know, I didn't really, I didn't know about it. And I did some research, and it's a Williams 1985, and it's very similar actually to Firepower. It's a System 9 game, so it's a different system, I think, than Firepower. But system 9 came out with um, uh, Space Shuttle uh, Cyclone, I think, and uh, and this game, Sora, uh, Sora, <laughs> Sorcerer. Uh, and I think there was only three games made for the System 9 hardware, so it was sort of the later, I mean, um, Firepower is what, 1980 I think, so this is an 85, very similar sound set though, it's got the Defender sort of sounds, it's got speech, it sort of mocks you a little bit like um, Black Knight 2000, um, it's got a, a similar layout to Firepower, different stuff in the middle, um, it's the rule set's slightly simpler I think, um, and a lot of people actually say that it's a relatively simple uh, pinball, easy to learn. But you know that that for me is is cool. I I just love that. I love that era of Williams. Um, I love that sound set, and um, it just looks really really cool. And it's even I was 114 on the top pinball list, which is right up there and and, and above a lot of big name pinball machines. Um, so, you know, I did a little bit of re you know, research quickly last night and um, I looked at it and I thought, wow, this is, this really is almost like Firepower's sister machine. It, re it really does seem that way. In fact, it's got a ramp across the top, which is almost identical to the ramp that's in Firepower 2. Um, so that's really interesting. Designed by Mark Ritchie, brother of Steve. It's got some amazing artwork from someone called Pam, someone or other. Apparently it was the only artwork that she did before she was made redundant. So she did that one machine and everyone raves about how good the artwork is. So overall, guys, it's an absolutely amazing machine. So I, um, I knew I couldn't pass this machine up, and especially, um, especially not, not, you know, with the price that it was. And it's a little bit like the, the, 
the, the Daytonas when I picked those up because they were just ridiculously cheap as well and again they weren't working I had to do a bit of work to get those going but I sort of um, thought you know what I'll give it a try and and I just I went in with the offer that he wanted because it was really low anyway I wasn't going to go any, offer any lower um, ridiculous price anyway I thought I'll just go in I'll, I'll, I'll see it's probably gone already but if I don't try you know if that, that would have eaten me up if I thought geez I really should have gone for that. if I saw it you know disappear within a couple of hours I would have thought geez there was an opportunity there to get a real pinball machine and that's something I've you know I just recently now discovered that I want to get to complete the sort of collection of things and and uh, get my real pinball skills up and I, I would have I couldn't live my, with myself guys well maybe not that bad but you know what I mean you just you'd, you'd be regretting that reminds me of that uh, that little skit in the King of Kong when that guy that's so funny that technician when he's talking about um, how I can't remember what's his name was going for the that record in Missile Command um, and he's talking about uh, how he you know missed the score because the machine keep resetting and he's just got this deadpan voice he knows he could have done it and he'll if he doesn't try again he'll never get that out of his mind and as as we get older the opportunity will get smaller and smaller until finally it's gone and then he won't be able to try and then, uh, then all you have is the regret of not trying again to reach that goal. And then what do you do? You live with a regret. So I don't want to see him live with that. I know what that's like. <laughs> Listen to this guy, I was like, oh my God, kill me now. Um, nice enough guy, but wow. I was just like, Jesus, man. Uh, but anyway, I, um, yeah, I, I didn't want to have that sort of regret to live with that. So I put in, I put in the, uh, a, 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 an SMS message and I said, I'll take it for, for the prize. Let me know when I can pick it up. He got back to me and he said, uh, another guy is looking at it tomorrow, but if he doesn't want it, I'll let you know. So I thought, cool, <laughs> great, I tried, and it's not going to happen. Um, surely it's going to get picked up. So I forgot about it. Oh, I didn't forget. Yeah, I sort of forgot about it. And then I, I sort of dismissed it in my mind anyway. And then the next day, um, I went into work, and I forgot my phone. So I left my phone at home. The one time I left my phone at home. And I was getting phone anxiety all throughout the day, guys. How bizarre is that? I went out to lunch, ordered some food, sat down. I was waiting for the buzzer thing to go off. And I normally would get out my phone. I just realised like how sort of addicted I am to my phone. I'm sure all you guys are as well. Just try it one time, going out and sitting down without your phone. I had to look around the room, guys. I'm sure people were looking at me going, why aren't you looking at your phone, man? Why are you staring at me? <laughs> Where am I? I'm going to look at the table. So that was bizarre. Anyway, that was a double whammy because I thought, well, now if the guy calls me, I don't even have my phone. <laughs> and, you know, he's probably just going to go on to the next guy. So even more so while I was at work, I just thought, nah, this is, I've lost it now. Wow, I was kicking myself. Anyway, so I got home and uh, looked at my phone and there was no calls. So I thought, well, that's strange because it was, by that time it was about half past seven. I had to actually stay uh, a bit later at work that, that night. And I thought, oh, well, I'll fire him off a message just to see. I thought, oh, he's, he's probably sold it then. Um, he shoots back a message going, oh, great timing. Uh, the other guy did look at it, but has decided to pass. Now, that, it, it doesn't concern me a lot, guys, because I know the machine is going to be a bit of a basket case. 
Um, it looks structurally okay. I think for the money, it's basically worth the cabinet alone. So I'm not actually concerned if it's too far gone. Um, and it likely has likely has got a lot of issues, especially if someone else has passed on it for the price. But then again, you don't know, right? It could be just someone who just doesn't have the technical skills, doesn't do restorations, was trying to get a cheap working, you know, or cheap pinball to see if you could get it working and maybe just look too much of a daunting task. I don't know. But the, the upshot was, was suddenly I was now in a position of, okay, now I'm buying it. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, ran through my mind logistics when and I thought again I can't let this sit there um, it's early on in the week I can't let this sit here until the weekend guys um, I have to pick it up you know what it's like you, you get a cheap deals like this you just got to pick it up do it really quickly make it easy for the seller uh, which means the only other option is for me to take this car that I'm in right now which is the four-wheel drive the family four-wheel drive, the four-wheel drive that takes my kids to school and to dancing and their music that they do and other things during the week, which my lovely wife normally ferries them around. And <laughs> this is where the biggest problem lay, because I knew to get this car and get it so that I could pick it up during a weekday I would absolutely disrupt that whole situation. So I think I've really pushed the limits with the relationship with the wife now, guys. I really do. I took it, I've taken it to another level. She wasn't really happy with the last couple of pickups because they're starting to encroach in other areas of the house. I've got two machines in my study. I've got two machines out in the lounge area. There's you know, one in the garage in the way as you walk in. Um, there's another th three out there. It is getting a little bit out of hand. And I could finally hear in her voice that she's getting really anxious, guys. She's not happy about it at all. And more so because now I said, well, can we swap cars for the day? And Guys, my other car, of course, is just a coupe. It's a two-seat. Well, it's got four seats, but the back seats are you're really bad in terms of legroom. And we've got four kids. So how's that going to work? <laughs> so, so what I had to do is I took three of the kids to high school this morning in this car and gave my wife my car, and she took the other, this, our littlest one, uh, to, to primary school and she actually works at that school so she's gonna take my car there now my air conditioning doesn't work and it's probably gonna, one of the well not one of the hottest days of the summer but I think it's getting up to about 34 or 35 degrees Celsius today guys it's damn hot when you've got no air con and my, my car is a, a dark bronze color and it really attracts the heat it's gonna be outside all day she is going to get really angry at me later <laughs> I feel I can see it coming so anyway so she's taken that and she's gonna have to um, after school she's gonna have to do like multiple trips to pick up the other kids from high school and take them home because she's not gonna be able to fit them all in the car at once and they've got music and dancing so she's gonna be she's gonna be even more pissed off than she was that I left her this morning and I sort of feel for her. I mean look it's first world problem guys right it's not a big deal a lot of people have bigger issues than this and I tried to explain that to her I said come on you know this is this is a you know, we're really lucky actually for what we have and all the rest of it um, we could be walking to school that didn't go down well um, anyway I do have a problem when I bring it home later. I don't have the space. I am going to have to be creative again. I don't know. I, I don't know what I'm going to do. But I could could not pass this machine up, guys. And I am genuinely actually really excited about it. Um, and because of the machine that it, that it is, I just I just think I've sort of lucked on scoring something really. Um, almost a hidden gem I think in, in pinball and and I just love firepower so much that this is a, just a, so similar in terms of the, the feel it's a fast table it can be brutal um, 
it's just ticks all the boxes as you know if I wanted a pinball and a cheap pinball then this really is the ultimate and it's actually better than getting a firepower even though you know I'd, really, I'd, I'd love to have one over this so anyway this has been really really long story I know that because I'm I'm, I'm almost at work <laughs> so um, but I hope you've enjoyed it I am uh, on the way in to work I thought I'd do this video now because what I'm going to do is basically leave work um, uh, dead on the dot and get there and we to get it in this car we're going to actually have to dismantle it we're going to take the legs off we're going to have to take the header uh, the, um, the head unit off and um, I'm hoping he's got the keys for the back glass god knows oh, he did say that the I'd need a new back glass I don't know if that's because there isn't one or it's broken um, I didn't ask any further questions um, so yeah I, and there was no photo of it in the uh, in the photo so there may actually not be a back glass at all um, but listen I, I don't care guys uh, I, I think the, the 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 main cabinet as I said the cabinet's worth the money even if I had nothing else um, let's just give it a go let's just see what happens so we've got a little bit of work ahead of us it's gonna still be about 30 odd degrees celsius even in the evening this evening it's been predicted it's really hot guys so it's going to be a hot move um, again probably won't film when i'm on location so um, i don't know my next uh, next bit of filming might be um, uh, might be back at home um, we'll see but anyway we'll see you soon and i guess with a sorcerer <laughs> it never ends it never ends guys <laughs> anyway let's go and pick it up see you soon okay we are back in the house and it is a couple of days on we've got the machine inside just temporarily in the lounge room and guys Wow, it was hot picking this up. I didn't even do any uh, footage of taking this thing out of the car. Dying under 35 degrees Celsius uh, conditions, picking this guy up. Um, so yeah, we got home and pretty much uh, got it inside, or it was actually outside before bringing it in uh, today, but, um, and pretty much collapsed that night and didn't film anymore. So here's um, the follow-up. And I haven't done anything to the machine um, other than take the head unit off the back. <clears throat> and that was funny actually because when we went to pick it up, the head was sitting on the back here. And I went to undo it and there was two smooth bolts in the back. I thought, why can't I get these smooth bolts out? And of course that was because this uh, one has a hinge system. <laughs> so the smooth bolts hold it together on the hinge and the other bolts um, go in the back here. Um, and uh, <laughs> you're only supposed to remove the back one and then uh, just fold the head down so that it fits flat here, much easier to transport. And that's how we actually did it in the end. Initially, I ended up um, unplugging all the cables because I thought I had to take the whole head off anyway. Live and learn. Uh, my World Cup soccer machine when I got it didn't have that hinge system so anyway guys what have we what have we got here um, <laughs> it's definitely a project um, I can see why potentially the first guy passed on it and definitely not because of the price it's definitely worth the money that I paid for this but it is a project and I think the guy that came to have a look at it believe was a some sort of flipper and wanted to do do it up and flip it and move it on but I think when he looked at it he probably realized that there's a lot to be done here not a quick flip if you wanted to do that um, and instead there'd be quite a bit of work so a labor of love it's certainly going to be uh, that suits me fine um, that's exactly the sort of thing I wanted to get I wanted to get into real pinball at a reasonable price and the entry price is definitely extremely good in this case um, really just the cost of a bare cabinet is what I paid and got everything else chucked in but um, that's really the start of it because now of course the journey will be getting this thing going and the extra expense that will go into doing that but 
you know, even that in itself, guys, is a nice thing to cover and hopefully it will help other people when, A, you're just going out to look at a machine, what to look for, um, help other people with their purchasing decisions and also just, you know, if you decide yourself if you want to take on a project, what's really involved because pinball machines are pretty complex and lots of moving parts, literally. Um, so it takes quite a bit to get them up and working again if they are in this sort of state. So let's take a bit of a look around, guys, see what we have got ourselves in for here. First of all, the main cabinet. Look, it's pretty solid. The paintwork on here actually is very good on both sides. Very slight, you probably won't be able to see it on camera, but there's a very slight chance that it's uh, cracking slightly, but very, very minor. Otherwise it looks pristine pretty much um, on both sides around the front. The coin door could do with a bit of a clean. We've got busted uh, coin inserts. I think I've got a couple of those spare anyway. Original Williams one still intact. No lock here, um, but you can see down the bottom we have bigger problems because the base has come away. Now the base isn't really structural, the rest of the cabinet is, um, and this has been hanging for a while, so it's got a bit of a, a dip in it and it won't easily sort of come back up. I have to take this whole thing apart, turn it upside down, and uh, straighten that base out and get it back in position. But look, again, it looks probably worse than it is. It's still completely intact, it's not busted or anything. Doesn't seem like it's got huge water damage, although it may have picked up uh, a bit of water from being uh, being open. The legs are a bit of a basket case. They're very rusty. Seem to have a slightly different design. You can see this one here, or this design here. Not on that one, and not on the back either. So looks like a bit of a mixer in terms of the uh, the legs, but I think that would be just a straight. Replacement of those, um, not worth really bringing back, especially if the design is different. The flipper buttons, <laughs> very worn. A white one on that side and a red one on that side. Again, we'll change those out. We'll get some uh, clear red ones, get them backlit eventually. Lockdown bar, a little bit dirty, small amount of uh, surface rust here, but I think that should clean up. I'll take the glass off in a minute and we'll have a look at the play field. In general though, the play field is very good. Let's come back to that. Uh, up on the back here, everything's intact. Uh, nothing's broken at all. Cable's all shot down the back okay. And we've got our original numbers on the back here. And the uh, serial number for Williams. And then back to the uh, the head unit and we've got all the boards out so he had the, the boards out guys and he was going to get this fixed so the story is is that this machine apparently had been in albany which is down the south of western australia for about eight years i think he said before he picked it up he was playing with it um and playing on it and it was all working for a good year or so he said then it stopped working and they sort of left it and i think it sort of got in a bit of disrepair um, once it was left and he had the boards out he was going to go I think he actually said he, he got a quote or maybe he was asking about quotes once he had the boards out and when he got the price that someone was going to charge him he thought wow going to cost more than <laughs> what I paid for the machine in total what he was selling it for so I, I don't think he could see the value in in doing that um, he certainly wasn't a, a pinball collector or anything he was pretty happy to get the space back because he had a number of other hobbies that he wanted to do so and again guys that's the thing when you're picking up machines is it's those sort of sellers that really you get the best deals you know they're not collectors they don't don't really have an attachment to the pinball and usually they sell them off for a good price because they want space or you know they're just sick of seeing it so now if we look at the boards so this is most of the boards there's one other little board uh, in the back the boards look generally pretty good however there are problems so we've got here this rust spot here which is definitely not good 
looks like the original batteries never seen this brand before it was probably the original in the machine <laughs> i'm surprised they haven't leaked all over the place i'm not sure if that's from it or not it doesn't sort of seem like it batteries don't seem like they've exploded or leaked as yet so i don't know why you know, there's a rust spot here another one at the back there i don't know where this has sort of come from because it almost looks like it's sort of dropped and splattered on there but it is causing some corrosion i believe but the rest of the board guys is actually pretty good um, so i'm hoping that if there are some problems and they are relatively localized again in here see there's some rust just on this particular one quite strange and uh going over to here this is obviously the main uh, mpu board this one is the speech board and this one is looks pretty good which is a good thing because they're pretty hard to get on these system nines and uh, this driver board interestingly on the back look at this it has another sort of run of gunk down here and then it's you know corroded the pins on the end so that's definitely not good either and then we've got the main uh, power supply which looks actually very good um, the fuses seem to be intact obviously I need to check all those it's definitely had work you can see here the plug has been uh, soldered on direct on the back and the other connector cut so someone's done work there to solder that directly in and it looks to me like all these have been reflowed at some point just like more solder on the back so this may have gone through a repair obviously it may may still not be any good but uh, that's the state of the boards really that I'm dealing with and on the back of the MPU in fact there is a bit of a bit of an odd thing and that most of this is okay I can see where a chip has been soldered in some newer solder on the back of that chip there and up the top here this one that was socketed has got corrosion all around the uh, the pins there which is really odd it's just that one and another one up there a little bit of corrosion so yeah it's uh not great guys it looks like there may have been a bit of burning there previously um looks like the two end solder points have got fairly hot they're all the sort of things you need to look at and of course normally you wouldn't have these boards out when you're picking up a game like this they would be in the machine so you wouldn't even really look around the back to see the state of the solder but um you know guys this again was so cheap that i was prepared to just take it as it is even just for the parts value just for the cabinet itself it would have been worth it let alone everything else with it um, but when you go and look really you do need to spend time going through and carefully looking at it if you get especially if you're paying a premium you want to make sure that you check all the all the parts now in the back here on the head on the head unit i've got, haven't got the front glass i'll show you that in a moment uh nearly every light globe globe is out by the looks of things <laughs> they're all blackened this uh display unit just the outside casing there is coming off i'm not sure if it's affected or not they are all there though all the displays so that's nice um, if they work or not it's another question this bottom piece needs a little bit of uh, surface work and looking at the back inside here okay we've got um, again some surface rusting on all the points for the lights that may or may not impact their con conductivity uh, we'll have to see the cables are a bit of a mixed bag some are okay this one here looks terrible looks like it's got a big rusted chunk out the side i think i saw a worse part than that somewhere along here hey, on the back here here we go so you can see there guys this is uh probably will need to be uh replaced i need to start getting my shopping list together a uh, bit of rust on the back of the speaker there but otherwise all the cabling all the cabling harness and everything all there ready to go um, and that's fine and then that other little board uh, in there which also has just a slight dusting of surface rust and then of course we've got fuse blocks and all sorts of things that we need to check 
And you know, I'm not familiar with pinball. This is my first uh, first one and probably <laughs> a very challenging machine to have as a first machine. But that's cool. Well, I'm going to learn, hopefully, out of this process. Um, and hopefully I can share that along with you guys too. So you can see if it's worth it picking up an old machine like this, what needs to be done. So uh, yeah, that's the back and the head unit. Clip that back on. Actually, still works, which is good. Other than that, we have the main back glass, which I must admit, first of all, guys, in fact, the head unit was on the machine and the back glass wasn't in it. And I actually just thought, oh well, there's no back glass because he did actually say um, I would probably need to get a new back glass. And I didn't know if that meant it had one or didn't have one at all. Certainly wasn't one in the original picture for the sale, so I just assumed that probably didn't have one. Well, when we were taking the machine out into the car, he said, um, hey, do you want the back glass? <laughs> I was like, well, yeah, sure, if you've got it. So he's got it, but unfortunately, excuse the, the light there, it's reflecting, you can see the state of it, guys. It is absolutely flaked, completely flaked away. And what's, <laughs> what's worse is, even when we picked it up and moved it, there was just chunks falling off it. I'm going to lift it up now. You can see, look at this. Look at all that, that paint behind there. It's just hanging there on a thread. So, of course, you couldn't recover this anyway. It's too far gone. So it's going to need new artwork. Um, and that's unfortunate because uh, back glasses are not cheap. And transport costs of, of them, of course, is... Uh, extremely expensive getting a new one of these may cost more than what i paid for everything <laughs> so that's um that's a bit disappointing to be honest um but it, it's very rare that you're going to get a really nice back glass anyway so it's one of those things if i can get it all going it sort of might be worth Spending that money and getting a really nice back glass, it makes a big difference to the look of the machine. You know, that with some new legs on here and then everything cleaned up, it could actually come out looking pretty stellar. Um, and obviously I've got to get and fix the problems with the boards. So I don't know what the state of it is. Um, I don't really want to fire it up as it is. I want to actually spend some time I'm going to clean off the stuff that I can see, see if it's, uh, if it's really eaten into the boards or not. Really assess each part, check all the fuses, take my time with that. Get everything cleaned up guys and then um, I'll fire it up on another video, a follow up one. And we'll see what state it is in electronically. But before we finish off, let's um, get the glass off and I'll show you the play field. Right, guys, so you can see the glass off here. Playfield isn't too bad. Like, really, with these sort of cheaper machines and stuff, you're going to have problems with the playfield normally. And this one, and especially this machine too, because doing a little bit of reading around, a lot of people have complained that the playfield is the first thing that seems to go. And this is really pretty good. I mean, I think it's got like the mylar coating here, which is, I think it's like, got some bubbles in it but and of course it has not been cleaned at all but other than that it's actually pretty nice this middle piece here apparently always cracks on every game just the way the ball bounces around the rubbers are shot of course we've got uh, <laughs> bits of rubber just hanging here it doesn't even feel like rubber anymore that feels like concrete um no oh, they're missing off there and stuff so definitely rubbers, I mean they're cheap, cheap enough, that's fine. It's got the original pop caps which was shared with another machine in Williams Pass, which is, was interesting. And often these are busted, they're broken from flying balls. And uh, you can see they are all intact, so they're normally fairly rare. The ironic thing is, is I've seen this machine done up with clear bumper caps and uh, that looks really really nice with leds and stuff for the rest of the play field um might go down that path um along here a bit of surface rust here probably come off hopefully uh, this back bit's pretty bad i'm just gonna need shaping off we've got the eyes at the back of the play field here which normally have lights behind which probably are not working 
and you know some dirt and grit along here it's just yeah it hasn't been touched guys so i am pretty happy with the play field um i won't pull the play field up it's a little bit difficult because these ones aren't actually um, tied in they're completely loose you can sort of prop them up but they're actually loose at the back they're easy to just take the whole thing out but I had a bit of a look on the back I mean everything's populated um, doesn't seem to be anything obvious in terms of anything burnt or anything uh, but hey there's probably some solenoids out and, and definitely some uh, bulbs will be out but in general I think this is actually for me this is actually the perfect project to get into real pinball and I am really really excited about it um, I sort of I sort of like the things that I need to get done on here we don't have to completely do re-artwork and stuff which is which is always a plus um, although I do have to take everything out of here to fix the bottom so that's the only bit of sort of woodworking stuff I have to do but other than that guys it's all going to be about a bit of polish some new legs a few new buttons new front inserts clean the uh, the table itself get all the lighting sorted out get these boards going hopefully the displays are okay swap out the lights on the back get all that stripped down and cleaned up and then um, eventually if I can get all that going then I might fork out for a new back glass to sort of finish it off but that will definitely be last I want to make sure I can get this project going so there you go guys we are on a journey to get the first real pinball going in the arcade um, <laughs> I wonder if it will only remain at one <laughs> now you've got one much like it, it happened with the video games you start with one and then you end up with how many have I got? 26 odd or something. <laughs> anyway guys, let's finish this video up. All right, let's finish up and actually just play a quick game of the table on Visual Pinball. Unfortunately, this isn't a VPX table. No one has released it as yet. So we have to play it on the older version, version nine. And it's not the FizzMod version either, unfortunately. So yeah, the, the ball jumps around a little bit. It's not very good in terms of physics and, uh, and performance. But to give you a bit of an idea of the sound, I really want you guys to hear the sound of the table. Um, as I said, the, you know, the, the similarities to Firepower using the same sort of sounds. It just sounds absolutely awesome. It's got the added um, attraction with the voices uh, in it as well. And sometimes it comes up when you press the flippers. I'm sure it does, or it maybe just does it randomly. <sighs> <laughs> done before um, but yeah look it'll give us a bit of an idea just before we close off so uh, let me set this up and let's have a quick game all right let's go for it <laughs> wow See the performance of the table is not that great, guys, but clicks of those sounds. It's just it's so good. So three, three flippers, and um, it's actually a fairly easy multi-ball to get if you sort of could play the table properly, and the, the physics aren't great. Um, on this to do it, but I just need to basically get it up that um, get it up that ramp up there twice, and that will actually give me automatic multiple. You don't actually have to do anything to to start it. So there you go, one ball locked, which is cool in that you can just get multiple straight away, and it's only a two ball multiple. But on the oh wow, on the flip side, um, <laughs> that sounds so good. On the flip side, it would sort of be cool if you had to sort of work a little bit more to enable it. 
there we go that's what I like about this table leave it off the post the center post just gives that just extra little bit of game dynamics having that center post whoops so it's a really nice mix guys you know three flippers center post action you got a ramp you got two ball multi ball uh, you're able to change the lights up here of course there is an added little switch right on the corner there so if the ball bounces off and hits that switch it actually moves these along even if you haven't chosen it with your flippers and uh, sometimes people have thought that they've got something wrong with their table because it's auto advanced and it's just because the balls hit that uh, hit that switch So how cool is this table going to be guys once we get the real one going? See the balls floating around the old VP9 physics. <laughs> yeah, it's more like playing on the moon. Wow. Actually very similar to um, uh, the Pinball Arcade in terms of their physics, just too floaty. That's why I love, oh wow, that's why I love VPX so much. <laughs> I love that. Well, that was a five ball setup. Last one. It. <laughs> yeah, that is cranking. So, guys, how cool is that? That is an awesome table, and it's going to be really, really cool once we get that real one working. But there is a long journey to go. So. Guys, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do subscribe. Give this uh, video a thumbs up if you like it. Join me on this journey of getting this pinball up and running. We've got other stuff happening in between. There's always stuff happening here at Spacey's Arcade, and uh, I really love to see you join me along. So see you at the next video. Till then, take care, look after yourselves, guys. And um, I might just have one more game of this before I, I finish up tonight. So. Um, Oh god, I just really don't get any better at acting this. Got a 20? <laughs>